Mina, Ohio Gazimas, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Yep, Saturday's coming Sunday morning. Again, pretty difficult for me. Coming at you with 1 Chronicles 19, a bit of a sad story. Starting in verse 1, it happened after this that Nahash, the king of the people of Ammon, died, and his son reigned in his place. Then David said, I will show kindness to Hanun, the son of Nahash, because his father showed kindness to me. So David sent messengers to comfort him concerning his father. And David's servants came to Hanun in the land of the people of Ammon to comfort him. And the princes of the people of Ammon said to Hanun, Do you think that David really honors your father because he has sent comforters to you? Did his servants not come to you to search and to overthrow and to spy out the land? Therefore Hanun took David's servants, shaved them, and cut off their garments in the middle at their buttocks and sent them away. Then some went and told David about the men, and he sent to meet them, because the men were greatly ashamed. And the king said, Wait at Jericho until your beards have grown, and then return. When the people of Ammon saw that they had made themselves repulsive to David, Hanun and the people of Ammon sent a thousand talents of silver to hire for themselves chariots and horsemen from Mesopotamia, from Syrian Makkah, and from Zobah. So, dude's father dies. David was like, you know what? Me and him were friends. Let me show some comfort to him. Let me send comforters to him. Let me sh kind of like pay my last dues, pay my respects. And Hanun's, the princes surrounding Hanun advised him saying, these guys are actually invaders. Or they want to be invaders. They're going to be spies so that later on they can invade the land. And so what was meant as a peace sign wound up causing war between two nations, and not just two nations. He summoned in three other nations, I'm assuming they're nations, as well. So, how many times, and this is a little bit painful to bring up, but let's face this together, guys, because the sooner we face it, the sooner we can overcome it. How many times have you had good intentions, you talked to someone, you did something as a sign of good faith and as a good gesture, and the other person completely blew it out of proportion, completely hated your guts for it, the whole thing flipped around on you, it wound up be a, being a confrontation instead of an exhortation, and sometimes they'll even talk to their friends and say, look at what this guy did, and they'll be like, yeah, what a scumbag. And then you've got a bunch of other people mad at you, and it all started from you having good intentions. First off, you didn't sin. You didn't do anything wrong. What you intended in your heart, that determines what you did, right or wrong. Now that doesn't mean intent, like justifies everything. Like if you intend to give money to the church and then you rob a bank to get the money, you've sinned. You've done a bad thing. You shouldn't do that. Please do not rob banks. The, God will provide for us me, by means that are legal and perhaps miraculous and not at the cost of your heart or the bank's money. <sighs> Ugh, don't do that. Now, now, I use the ludicrous example to basically say, you know, hey, this this is something that obviously intent doesn't always result in something good but if your intent really was good you, you know you sent a card you said what you thought to be kind words you tried to um perhaps point out something to the person that they didn't see before the intent of your heart was good you didn't put them down they just really misinterpreted it you're not in sin you're not at fault you have nothing to ask god to forgive you for you do have a misunderstanding to clear up. Now, in David's case, he actually had to subjugate those nations. And unfortunately, a, fend, a, a friend offended is harder to win than a strong tower. That's in Proverbs. So sometimes these things don't end well, and you had nothing but good intent going to it. You're not at fault. You've done nothing wrong. And for those of you who do get offended by what other people say, try to have some love, mercy, forgiveness, and grace. A lot of evil is overcome with love and forgiveness, and that's in the book of James. So if you're the type of person to get offended by what other people say, try to have some mercy, grace, love, forgiveness. And don't, if you, if you misinterpreted it, you know, ask them, what did you mean when you said that? Don't just be like, how dare you say that? That's terrible. Don't assume on their heart's intent. Don't assume on words that you think to be malicious. Now obviously if someone says something like kill yourself or please die or I hope you jump off a cliff or get in a car accident, there's no way to mistake that for anything other than ill intent. But things like 
you know, it might be a good idea if you try this out, or it might be a good idea if you stop doing this. They, that person may be genuinely concerned about something you're doing that to them is in error and is at fault. And they're trying to gently correct you. They're trying to point out, some, or maybe they're just pointing out something you haven't seen up to this point. They're not attacking you. They're not coming against you. They're not trying to manipulate you or deceive you or take control of you. They are genuinely having your best interests at heart and the best interests of your organization and the people around you. And sometimes there is ill intent on one side or the other. Err on the side of love and forgiveness. If you err on that side, a lot of wars can be completely avoided altogether, and a lot of hurt feelings and lost friendships can also be avoided. And, and it's never too late to talk to the person and either ask forgiveness or ask for an explanation. You know, what did you mean? I'd rather this not end in a war or a broken relationship. It's never too late to go to the person either. Please keep that in mind. So let's use this story as an example of what not to do and then keep those other scriptures in mind and do those things. Love and forgiveness. In the words of a great man, love and peace. Love and peace. For those of you who are weeaboo enough to get that, you're awesome. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. I love you and God bless.